Inshallah, we'll continue with Surah At-Teen. Wat-Teeni wa Zaytuni wa Turi Sinin. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim. Allah swears by teen is fixed, but Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas and Zaytun is olives. Swears by the olive and the figs. What teen was Zaytun, what Turi is Sinin, and Turi Sinin is the place where Allah revealed the tablets to Sayyidina Musa السلام, according to Kabla. Uh, but Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas, he said that the teen also has another interpretation. It is the masjid on the Mount of Judy where Sayyidina Nuh landed. Sayyidina Nuh, uh, he landed, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Uh, his the boat on, on the Mount of Judy and he built a masjid there. It is called Teen. So Allah is swearing by that most. Was Zaytun, Allah is swearing by the, uh, in Jerusalem, Masjid Al-Aqsa. Uh, so it's reference to that area uh, where Sayyidina, uh, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, the boat landed for Sayyidina Nuh, and the area of uh, Jerusalem in, in uh, Masjid Al-Aqsa. Allah is swearing by those two blessed places. Allah says about uh, Masjid Al-Aqsa الذي باركنا حوله The whole area of Masjid Al-Aqsa is Mubarak okay. So Swearing by وَتِّينِ وَزَّيْتُونِ وَطُورِ سِنِينَ وَهَذَا الْبَلَدِ الْأَمِينَ اللهم صلي على سيدنا محمد The city that is secure, that is safe and this Allah is swearing by basically three places Masjid Al-Aqsa, Mount Judy Four places, Turi Sinin, where Sayyidina Musa received the tablet, and the fourth place is Mecca al-Mukarram. And this was said by Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas, and Mujahid, and Ikrama, and many others, that there isn't a, a difference of opinions as to what is the city that is safe and secured, and that is the city of Mecca. And it is secured until Judgment Day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Prophet sallallahu wa informed us that even at the time of the Dajjal, that the city of Mecca, he cannot enter the city of Mecca or Medina or Damascus. Okay? Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. And how, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, as we said, the first place of the fig, which was an olive, another opinion is that the fig and olive is Jerusalem. And then Allah sent uh, Sayyidina Isa bin Maryam there. The second place is Mount Sinai, which is where Allah spoke to Sayyidina Musa. And the third place is Mecca al mukarramah These three places are mentioned at the end of the Torah. And Allah mentioned them in the order of, uh, he mentioned that Jer Jerusalem, Al-Quds, and then uh, Tur Sina, and Mecca al -Mukarram. He swears by these three holy places that لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ Verily, we have created man in the best form. Uh, so, to be a human being is uh, a ni'mah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon us, upon those who are created. And it is very important to be grateful for this now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has endless creation, seen, unseen, animal kingdoms, plant kingdoms, and He chose us to be in Ahsan Taqweem, in the best form Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. And that's why the 
uh, when Allah created Sayyidina Adam, He ordered the angels to prostrate for Him. Because the human being is the crown of creation, it's the crown gem of creation. He, he has the potential to exceed even the angelic beings in servanthood and service to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is important to be grateful for this, the ni'mah of being created men and women. Not just Ahsan Taqweem, inwardly and outwardly, form and otherwise. ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَاهُ أَسْوَلَ السَّافِلِينَ Then we, re we reduced him to the lowest of the low. And here there's different ta'wils, just different tafsir, that those who, those who choose the wrong path, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send them to the worst place, hellfire. And this was said by many uh, mujahid, uh, al-Hasan ibn Zayd, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after creating man in the best form, if they don't fulfill their purpose, then they are reduced to the worst place and worst form in hellfire. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Exception to that is those who believe <coughs> and do righteous deeds. They are, يعني, Allah created us in the best form, they will continue <coughs> in that uh, as most honored creation. Those who acknowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believe in Him are excluded from those who are reduced to the lowest of the low. There are other tafsirs to tumaradnahu asfal al If you take that only for the physical appearance of a human being, that Allah created in the best physical form, then as we grow older, we descend into uh, a uh, yani into a decrepit of old age. I mean, this means as you you start to lose your your beautified form. That's one meaning. But that does not, uh, the next verse, How can you explain that those who believe, they also get old? So uh, that wheel is highly unlikely. Similarly, Allah mentioned in Surah Al-Asr, al in the Insan al that by the age, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that human beings are at loss except those who believe in. And uh, so this is also similar to that mean. So those who believe, what do, what do they have? Instead of uh, being thrown in hells, they shall have the reward without end. What causes you to doubt or to deny Religion, O son of Adam, is Isn't Allah the most wise, the best of judges? And here, when you're reciting this in prayer, or when you're reciting in general, Allah is asking, is, isn't Allah, He's asking us, He's addressing, isn't Allah the best of judges? You say, Bala, yes, He is. The next surah is Surah Iqra, and this is by majority of ulama that the first revelation is Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. That Sayyida Aisha, Imam Ahmad recorded that the first thing that began happening with the Messenger of Allah was dreams that he would see in his sleep that would come true. So Prophet Sallallahu revelation started with him having dreams, and these dreams would come true exactly as he saw them. And he would not see a dream except that, that it would come true just like the clearness of how he see, like, the, like he's seeing the sun. It would come exactly as it. Then he did the seclusion, Prophet Sallallahu in Ghari Hira. And he, he used to go to Hira and seclude himself 
there for many nights, bring provision. Until the provisions are done, he would come back uh, to Sayyidina Khadija and replenish and then go back. And that's where say, the angel Jibreel alayhi salam came to him and he said to him, Iqra, read. He said, Ma ana He said, I, I am not one who reads. Uh, and he repeated this three times, Iqra, and he says, Ma ana And then he said, Iqra, bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq, read in the name of your Lord that creates. Khalaq al insana min ala. He fashioned a human being from uh, a living uh, organ, small, ala. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. So when, when this happened to Prophet, when Sayyidina Jibreel came to him and, and hugged him three times and told him to read, it was, Prophet Sallallahu was so overtaken that when he went home, he was shaking. He said to Sayyidina Khadija, lay down and said, cover me, zammiluni, zammiluni, wrap me, wrap me up. And he was, it's a, it's a very powerful experience that he, Sayyidina Jibreel appeared to him and, and what he told him to read. And he said, "Qad khashitu, ala nafsi." He said, "I fear something may have may have happened to me." Like, like he first, he was so overtaken by the experience that he thought maybe uh, something happened to him. And she said, "Never by Allah, Allah will never disgrace you." Say the Khadija. And she said to him, "Allah will never disappoint you or disgrace you. You keep good relations to your relatives. You speak the truth. You help the poor and the destitute." You serve your guests generously, you help deserving family in calamity, afflicting, afflicting people. So look at Sayyidina Khadija's love for Prophet Sallallahu and understanding of who he is. Uh, even before Islam, she said, she said he was worried and afraid after the experience, said, you have nothing to worry about. Allah will never cause you any harm, uh, yani to, not to, to be imagining this. No. So she say the Khadija, Khadija al Kubra. That's why she's one from the four, the greatest women for all humanity are four: Say the Khadija, Say the Fatima, Say the Asiya, and Say the Maryam. And then Say the Khadija. Everybody knows the story. She took him to her uh, nephew. Uh, to her uncle, and he said to her, Say, Sayyidina Waraka, and he informed Prophet Sallallahu that what he experienced and the one who met, who told him to read, is Namusu, is the messenger of Allah that uh, was sent to Musa as well. And he said to him, if Allah gives me enough time to live, I will support you and and help you against when your when your people will turn you out, when your people will kick you out from your home. And he says, Are they going to throw me out from Mecca? Will they drive me out? And Sayyidina Waraka said, anyone who came with something similar to what you have brought was treated with the with hostility and enmity. And if I should remain alive till that day, I would firmly support you. So Sayyidina Waraka passed away before that. اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم read and your Lord is the most generous one الذي علم بالقلم the one who taught with the pen عَلَّمَ الْإِنسَانَ مَا لَمْ يَعْلَمْ The one who taught a human being what that which he does not know. So, all knowledge that humanity has today is not self, uh, يعني self-taught. Allah says He taught human beings. And He taught us through the prophets, 
and otherwise. But all knowledge is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So human beings have no claim to anything. If you learn something, don't make it don't be proud of it. It is a drop in an ocean of knowledge that Allah has granted you. Attribute it to your Lord, not to yourself. Allah says, Kalla, inna al insana la yatgha. Human being trans- transgresses the limits. Arra'ahustagna. When he sees himself, he thinks himself something. Thinks he, he thinks he he can do things on his own. That he thinks he's not indebted to anyone. Inna ila rabbika ruja. Verily, one day you, all of you shall, shall come back to your Lord. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَرَأَيْتَ الَّذِي يَنْهَى عَبْدًا إِذَا صَلَّى أَرَأَيْتَ إِنْ كَانَ عَلَى الْهُدَى أَوْ أَمَرَ بِالتَّقْوَى أَرَأَيْتَ إِنْ كَذَّبَ وَتَوَلَّى And this is, these verses here talking about Abu Jahl. Do you see the one who prevents a servant when he prays? He tries to stop people from praying to their Lord. And this was revealed about Abu Jahl alayhi ma yastahiq. He threatened the Prophet ﷺ for performing salah at Kaaba. رَأَيْتَ الَّذِي يَنْهَى عَبْدًا إِذَا صَلَّى رَأَيْتَ إِنْ كَانَ عَلَى الْهُدَى Allah is saying, do you see that Abu Jahl? Is he, does he have any guidance? Is he on guidance? Do you think he's a man... Uh, who is upon the straight path. Do you see him uh, inviting people to piety, to goodness, to righteousness? He's telling, actually, to his, he's telling Abu Jahl, do you, this man that you are trying to stop from praying, have you, have you given yourself a fair chance to see if he was guided? If he was on guidance, have you given yourself a fair chance to see what is he calling you to? Is he calling you to something good or bad? Is he calling you for taqwa? Huh? And then is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, does he not know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees what he's doing? Abu Jahl. Nay, if he does not stop what he's doing, Abusing our Prophet ﷺ, we will scorch his forehead. Nasiya is this part. We will make it black, his forehead. A lying, sinful forehead. Nasiya tin kadiba tin khatiya. Faliyadu nadiya, sanadu zabaniya. Let him call his counsel. Because they used to meet in their nadi, and Abu Jahl would try to cause problems for Prophet So Allah is saying, let him call the people of his council. We will call the Zabaniya, those who are looking after hell, the angels that are ferocious, who are looking after hell. So that was Zabaniya. This is what Sayyidina Ibn Abbas said that Abu Jahl said, if I see Muhammad praying at the Kaaba, I will stomp his on his neck. So this reached the Prophet. He said, Prophet Sallallahu they told him that Abu Jahl said that if you pray, he was going to stomp on your neck. Prophet Sallallahu said, if he tries to do this, he will be snatched by the angels. They're not going to allow him to do this. And this hadith was also in the Tirmidhi and in Nasa'i. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. That Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas, that the Messenger of Allah was praying at the maqam of Sayyidina Ibrahim. 
When Abu Jahl bin Hisham passed by him and said, Oh Muhammad, haven't I prevented you from this? And he reprimanded the Prophet Sallallahu The Messenger of Allah became angry with him and reprimanded him. Then he said, Oh Muhammad, what can you threaten me with by Allah? I have the most kinsmen. So he was boasting about his tribe of this valley with me in... in uh, then Allah revealed, Let him call his tribe. Let him call his supporters. We're called the 19 angels of torment. What are they going to do with them? And Prophet ﷺ said, If he had ever, if he had come near to me to abuse me, the angels would have snatched him part by part. They would, they would tore him apart. كَلَّا إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَيَطْغَى Verily, human being transgresses the limits and رَآهُ اسْتَغْنَى وَمَسْفَعًا بِالنَّاصِيَةِ نَاصِيَةٍ كَاذِبَةٍ خَاطِيَةٍ فَلِيَدْعُ نَادِيَةٍ سَنَدْعُ الزَّبَانِيَةٍ كَلَّا لَا تُطِعْهُ وَجْجُدْ وَاقْتَرِبْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordering Prophet Don't pay attention to him, do not obey him O Muhammad, whatever he tells you don't pray there or whatever, don't listen to him. And make sajda to us and draw nearer. So Prophet ﷺ was ordered to not pay heed to him, not, not pay attention to him. Allah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qad. Wa ma adaraka ma laylatul qad. ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر This surah was revealed in the month of Ramadan in which the Quran if Sayyidina bin Abbas and others said Allah sent the Quran down all with its power with its lights with its secrets in one, at one time, from the preserved tablet to the heart of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in one night, and that is in the night of power. And some of our Mashayikh, they say it was revealed twice, once in Mecca and once in Medina, and that it came down fully like this with its powers twice. Some say Laylat al and the 15th of Shaban, those two nights that the Quran was revealed. There's two opinions, some say it's on that night alone, and some say also night, night of uh, 15. And our Mala Shaykh Nazim used to say on both nights it was revealed with its power. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and what do you know about the night of power? And not asking, exclaiming, as they say. And it's a very important night. Laylatul Qadri, better than 83 years, Khairu min al Fishar, of worship, worshiping on the night. And this is to honor our Prophet وسلم, because his, the, 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 the ages of his Ummah are short. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him so many opportunities for his Ummah to reach stations that others would spend 80, 90, 100 years to reach. To in one night to reach that station. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ شَهْرُ مُبَارَكَ Ah, Allah grant us, inshaAllah, and grant you many Ramadans on Iman and Islam. And this is uh, an important night. We all know the hadith that مَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ إِمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا وَفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِ Whoever fasts, on, whoever stands in prayer on the night of uh, power, night of Qadr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all his sins. Allah. The angels descend uh, and the ruh with every matter Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends them with. Huh? Sa'id al Mansur said that peace concerning every matter. Mujahid said, peace concerning everyone. They bring, they bring peace and barakah 
the angels. Salamun here, it is safety and security. There's no shaitans in it. There's no evil. Huh? Until Fajr. Salamun here, Hatta Matla il Fajr. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad. And there are many hadiths uh, about the night of power. We've been mentioning them this whole past week. And last night was the night of the 27th, but it doesn't mean you relax. It is most likely. Some even say that the holiest night, one of the holiest nights of the month of Ramadan is the last night. Sayyidina Ali would spend the night of Eid. He would not sleep. He would make Qiyam al all night. And he, he, and he said that that is one of the holiest night, nights of the year, it is said. So uh, we still have a day or two. Don't think that the 27th passed, khalas, and relax. No, inshallah, do your best in the remaining time. Allah, Allah. 7.35. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us to witness this night, the night of Laylatul Qadr, and to be from the recipients of its lights, inshallah, in this year. And if we live to see another Ramadan in, in all the years, and if we don't live to see another Ramadan, may this make, make this Ramadan a complete purification so that we meet our Lord and we have no sins, inshallah. May Allah ta'afir bi hurmatil fatih. Thank you all who joined us. Barakallah fikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.